This week, SpaceX is crushing it. The company started the week off with a picture-perfect Crew Dragon in-flight abort test. The launch of Starlink 3 is also scheduled for this week, Friday, January 24th. And in Boca Chica, Elon's on the scene as the team tries to work out challenges with the primary structure. SpaceX Starship Update On Sunday, in a sort of mini-press conference held by Elon, after the official post-in-flight abort test conference, we got some more details on Starship development. Raptor progress is going extremely well. According to Elon, SpaceX is making significant progress on Raptor engines so far. They're currently at serial number 20. The production rate on Raptor is improving significantly, with incremental improvements being made on subsequent Raptor engines. On the other hand, work on the primary structure is much slower, especially the domes. His statement on the domes were echoed in a tweet over the holiday season. Getting the domes right on the propellant tanks is one of the most difficult things. In the mini press conference, he also highlighted some other difficult parts of Starship manufacturing, including the interface from the tank to the nose cone fairing, the control surfaces, the landing legs, the heat shield, and orbital refilling. Orbital refilling. In terms of orbital refilling, he did mention that SpaceX will be leveraging from lessons learned from precision docking Dragon with the ISS. Orbital refilling with Starship, however, seems a bit more complicated. He described it as a space station docking with a space station. He ended the mini-conference stating that he's excited about the potential of Starship. It's going to be something that has a profound step change effect in humanity's ability to go beyond Earth. As he confirmed in the mini-press conference, he was later spotted in Boca Chica later that day where ring and barrel production is in full swing. Crew Dragon In-Flight Abort Summary SpaceX started the week with a picture-perfect Crew Dragon In-Flight Abort test on Sunday, January 19, 2020, achieving a critical milestone in NASA's commercial crew program. The launch took place from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The launch escape system demonstrated the critical ability of the Super Draco thrusters to propel Dragon a safe distance away from Falcon 9 in the event of an emergency. Sequence of events At almost 88 seconds into launch, as predicted, Crew Dragon's eight Super Draco thrusters ignited, propelling Dragon a safe distance away from the launch vehicle. Shortly after escape, 96 seconds into launch, again as predicted, Falcon 9 became unstable, breaking up in the atmosphere and bursting into a spectacular giant fireball. From SpaceX's livestream, Dragon then appeared to follow the flight path projected by SpaceX in their launch escape animation. After aboard, Dragon coasted to Apogee, the trunk was jettisoned, and the Draco thrusters then fired in order to orient Dragon to a parachute deploy altitude. Post-press conference updates. About one hour after Dragon splashed down in the Atlantic, a post-IFA test press conference was held featuring NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein, NASA Commercial Crew Program Manager Kathy Leaders, Elon Musk, and astronauts Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover. The panel was moderated by Bettina Klan, NASA Communications. Through the post-in-flight abort test press conference, we got some incredible sights not only about the IFA test specifically, but also we got some incredible details on Crew Dragon and its abort system in general, as well as SpaceX and NASA's future plans for the commercial crew program. I face specs. The entire panel seemed absolutely fired up about the test. According to a statement made by Elon in the post-in-flight abort test press conference, the peak velocity of Dragon during abort was more than double the speed of some, or Mach 2.2, and the capsule went to 40 kilometers or 131,000 feet. Dragon landed in relatively high winds of around 13 to 18 knots. Conducting the test under these conditions will provide critical data that will inform the decisions to launch astronauts under similar flight envelopes. Performance of the Mark III parachutes In addition to the demonstration of the launch escape system, the in-flight abort test also saw the second system level test of the Mark III parachutes. It was a flawless execution of both the drogues and the mains. In the coming weeks, we could expect as many as two more system level tests of the Mark III parachutes in order to validate the system's performance. According to a statement made by Elon and collectively agreed on by the panel, the hardware supporting Demo 2 is expected to arrive at the Cape most likely by the end of February and no later than March. Elon mentioned, however, that a lot of double, triple, and quadruple checking needs to be done before the first crewed flight. Demo 2 is expected to take place in Q2 of 2020. Factors affecting the timeline include the ISS schedule as well as the mission duration of Demo 2. 
Demetu was initially expected to be a short duration test flight to the ISS. A longer duration operational mission was then expected to follow. It now looks that NASA might change that sequence given the success of the in-flight abort. In the coming weeks, SpaceX and NASA will review the data and determine if Demo 2 will be a short duration or long duration mission. A longer duration mission of course gets the maximum use of the ISS. It will also require additional training from the astronauts, which would affect exactly when in Q2 we should see Demo 2 occur. More Crew Dragon insights and catching dragon like catching fairings. At the official press conference, Elon also clarified or reiterated some important points about Crew Dragon and the advantage of Crew Dragon's launch abort system compared to other launch escape systems like launch abort towers. Crew Dragon's abort system for one is integrated into the spacecraft, which allows abort all the way to orbit. In launch abort towers, by contrast, you'd usually end up ejecting the tower shortly after launch. You'd not only lose the capability to abort all the way to orbit, but the ejection of the tower also introduces a state change, not to mention decreased reusability. Crew Dragon's integrated launch abort system improves on all this. Again, it increases reusability, safety, and allows for abort all the way to orbit. In the future, according to Elon, in order to further increase reusability, we could possibly see SpaceX attempt to catch Crew Dragon using a similar process as fairing recovery. Elon also took the time to explain the scenario where an explosion may occur before an escape event. In this case, Dragon's heat shields are robust enough to withstand the fireball. In this case, the spacecraft would just fly out of the fireball. He did say that this might look like something out of Star Wars. Crew Dragon and Falcon 9, an exceptional degree of autonomy. Elon also took the time to clarify the exact details of the abort sequence. In short, there's an exceptional degree of autonomy. According to Elon, way more than a human can do is occurring in a fraction of a second. Once the system detects things are severe enough to trigger an abort, a command is issued for the engines to shut down, cut thrust, the abort system is pressurized, and the engines are then fired up. This test, as NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine stated, the highest G state was 3.5 Gs, 2.3 Gs on the way back. Elon did state that the launch abort system is capable of up to 6 or more Gs. However, the system limits the acceleration to maximize the comfort and safety of the astronauts. The success of the Crew Dragon in-flight abort test now puts SpaceX and NASA one step closer to restoring the ability of the United States to return astronauts to the ISS on US manufactured vehicles. Or as Jim Bridenstein likes to state, American astronauts um, to space on American rockets from American soils. The test also brings SpaceX and NASA one step closer to opening up low Earth orbit for commercialization. Increased access to space through multiple launch providers will give startups, scientists, and citizen scientists the opportunity not only to explore LEO, but to uniquely innovate as Bridenstine stated, particularly in the fields of industrialized biomedicine, advanced materials, and space tourism. As I've mentioned in previous videos, what SpaceX is doing right now with Starship, Crew Dragon, and Starlink is extremely impressive. The company is off to a great start for this year. In just the first month of 2020, SpaceX has achieved a critical milestone as part of NASA's commercial crew program. The company has also taken essential steps in advancing towards its highly ambitious plans to provide low-latency, high-bandwidth, global broadband internet access. The launch of Starlink 3 is expected to occur this Friday at 10.54 a.m. Eastern Time. If SpaceX can keep up with this pace, then 2020 will be another record-breaking year for the company in terms of Starlink, Starship, and Crew Dragon.